So welcome everybody. Today we're going to be uh, looking at uh, a depth of field exercise practical for you today. Um, we've set it up so that there are going to be five components to this exercise and we'll go through the different steps as we, uh, as we progress through the, uh, the instructions here. As you can see, we've got this set up with um, multiple objects, in this case three. So you are going to be provided with a, a, a graphic illustration that gives you an idea as to how to set this up. Obviously for space, uh, we don't necessarily have sufficient space in here to do it as you will at your home or other location. So first off, we need some type of a backdrop that is going to be uh, your first consideration. From that backdrop, uh, we're going to refer to this as object number three. Object number three is going to be approximately one foot or 12 inches from the backdrop. From that position there, the second object is uh, 24 inches or, sorry, 36 inches from the backdrop. So uh, two feet from the first object or the number three object as we're referring to it. And the third cup, which is our object one, is a distance of another 24 inches or two feet from the middle object. So this cup is in, a, in essence five feet from our starting position or our backdrop. The position of the cups being offset is, is slightly arranged so that the position of the camera uh, in your composition will be able to show all three objects within the same composition frame. So uh, again, due to uh, distance restrictions, uh, our camera here is obviously only a few inches away from the first object, when in essence it should realistically be 24 inches or 2 feet in front of that object. So the angle of view from the camera should be such that the first object is, is visible, the second is offset towards the right, looking at it through the camera lens, and the third one is going to be offset towards the left, making all three visible within the viewing window for the composition of the camera. So for our purposes here, I mean, for visual, just for uh, uh, demonstrative purposes, we have the window here from the uh, fuming hood. Uh, obviously a window or a glass is not ideal. We want something that's solid, preferably something that actually has uh, some detail on it that you can uh, see what the focusing is, see whether it's in sharp focus. So something that has contrast, either something uh, um, written on a piece of paper that has uh, black and white hash marks on it or black and white writing, uh, a photograph or something that will um, be distinguishable for the differences as we're going to demonstrate them through this process. Uh, again, ideally, um, this should be done close to a window if practical. So in this case here, imagine that there is a window in front, so it's allowing natural light into the area that we're uh, doing the demonstration or doing your practical in, so that you're having natural daytime light coming in uh, so that it will properly illuminate the area, hence you won't need as much uh, uh, concern about uh, auxiliary lighting or on onboard or external lighting. So the remainder of our setup would be as such, as I said, the camera will be two feet back from the first object. It will also need to be stabilized on something, either on a tripod or on uh, some hard uh, surface that uh, will keep it from having camera motion or uh, also the angle of the lens. In this case here, sitting like this, it's actually tilted a little bit down. Maybe if you can adjust it so that the camera, uh, raise it up so that the camera is actually sitting level as opposed to pointing at a downward angle. So the practical that we're going to do is focusing on three aspects of uh, depth of field. So as we know, uh, the consideration or the definition of depth of field incorporates that area of what is considered acceptable focus between the camera and the object uh, that is being focused on or the focal plane of the, of the image. So um, the three things that, that will affect it, as we discussed in lecture, are going to be the uh, aperture setting uh, of the camera, so the uh, size of the diaphragm or the opening. So when the diaphragm opens, how large is it? 
So it can either have a wider uh, aperture, uh, so allowing more light into the camera, or it can be stopped down to a smaller aperture setup. The second uh, factor that's going to uh, affect um, the, uh, the depth of field is the focal length of the lens. So we have variable focal, focal, length, focal length lenses, um, bearing in mind that the differences between the D7000 and the D7100 is such that um, there's much more of a, a, a variable with the 7100 series going up to 140 millimeters. So we are going to use, uh, for the practical, we're going to work within the parameters of the D7000 camera, uh, so it will be a much uh, a shorter focal length for, the, um, uh, for some of the exercises demonstrating maximum focal length. The third part of this is going to be the, the subject to camera distance. So however close the proximity that object, that target subject is, from the camera will also impact on the depth of field. Um, in most cases, the, the primary consideration of those three is going to be your aperture setting. The other ones are secondary, and we will demonstrate them as well in this practical. So, uh, so this, is probably, this is basically the setup as we've discussed it. Now, as far as what objects you're using is totally up to yourselves. Uh, for those that are doing the, uh, the practical here at campus, we have uh, artifacts that you can use, objects you can use for this exercise. If you're doing this at home, you can use uh, something similar to this, either a, like a, a colored drinking cup or something that has uh, a definitive sharpness to it that you can differentiate between whether it, that photograph you're taking is in sharp focus or whether it is slightly a blur or totally out of focus. So for instance, using a um, a flask or a beaker of some sort, it's, it really has no definition as to what is considered in sharp focus, so probably not a good option to use. Here you can use these cups, for instance, that have these uh, balloons on there, very sharp uh, uh, contrast. Another example might be these uh, cupcake uh, uh, liners or even such things as a uh, small uh, Hot Wheels car or something to that effect that, again, has sharp uh, uh, defined detail and lines on it that make it good for uh, showing the, uh, the actual amount of focus that that image is trying to portray. So as we discussed, the uh, primary function of this exercise is uh, to show uh, uh, the variables in relation to depth of field, but there's also a secondary component to this of perspective, which is, as I said, that's not really uh, the focus of this, Focus, but anyway, uh, it will also uh, um, uh, you'll you'll see the difference how the perspective is interacted with the uh, the different settings on the camera as well. You are going to be operating this in full manual mode. So again, using your mode dial, adjusting it to your M uh, on the uh, body of the uh, uh, of the lens, switching over to manual, and also on the body of the camera, switching that to manual mode as well. Uh, for uh, adjustment of your focal length, uh, you can see that there are on the uh, outer ring here of the, uh, the barrel of the lens, it has the variable focal lengths written on here. So um, some of them are going to be estimates. You can see that there's one that's indicating it uh, 24 millimeters and 35 millimeters, uh, and just rotate it to its uh, the proximity is, is correct for what the... Uh, the, the um, descriptors of the practical part. Uh, for the focusing, uh, so in order to adjust the focal length, it, again, it is the, the larger of the two um, uh, rubberized uh, uh, gaskets on the outside of the, uh, the barrel of the lens, and the smaller one, or the one that's closer to the camera body, is the one that actually adjusts the focusing. 